flashback tongues, golden tongue stone. It's got a flashback, it's a golden stone, and it's got a tungsten bead and lead. It's too early in the morning for we, this. This, this. This fly will, will penetrate concrete and heavy water and get down to into the muddy water where these stone flies often live. And with the flashback, uh, often you're, in the spring you're fishing stone flies where you have poor, vis poor visibility. Poor visibility. Or, or you know, high off-colored water and this fl flashback May, is, June is just in the killer. West, May, June in the west and you, you folks back east, it could be March, February, yeah. March. And this flashback tongue zone is, uh, is the answer. If they're, you know, if it's a stone fly situation. Now we're going to the same hook? 5263. This is a three extra long hook because the stone fly is just a little longer fly. Yeah. It you is. need a little more shank. So. We, and notice you've increased the bead size slightly too. Yeah, this is a little bigger hook. It's like when the. I've used this, I've used, uh, you know, up to a six, even a four for some stone flies. And that's a, you know, that's something a lot of people don't realize. There are literally hundreds of different styles of stones. Oh, yeah. And they literally, almost all the months of the year, tiny stones that come out early in the season sure. to the big, and most people think of big salmon flies or the trout flies of the yeah. West. And they're only a small, small portion of Well, it. you know, just like Shaquille O'Neal, Terranarsis stonefly nymphs aren't born big. Nope. They got to develop. They into start them. off real small, so when you in your in their, your stream, you have all. So that turnip has lived three years. Three years. I and, was. And you so, beat me to so that. You, I was going to throw that in. I got you. I got you. Got me. So anyway, what people think think that you know they have to fish great big huge stone stone flies that are about half the time bury in their brain. Yeah. You know you don't need to fish a great big two, even though no. the, their stone fly is that big, because there are lots of smaller ones. Right. And so, and especially in, where you're fishing with a lot of different people like the hatch, and everybody's throwing sixes, and you drop down to an eight or a ten, you'll be the one that'll catch fish. Yeah, I mean, there's all, I mean, there's different species of stoneflies which are different sizes at maturity, but there's also different sizes of the big stoneflies in That's the river, right. and uh, I, I just don't, you know, like the huge brain penetrating. You know, size two stone flies. Okay. Before. So anyway, we Here got we go. a tungsten bead on there. We're gonna crank up some lead. Now you're wrapping back towards you. That's just it's that. easier to break that. it off. Yes, it is. And then I just kind of pinch it off my thumbnail here. So that's why you have that little lead underneath your thumbnail there. That's permanent split. Yeah, that permanent split. I've yeah. noticed that. that that's very that's handy. That. Okay. Again, we got some UTC. A uh, little bigger fly. I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, one forty. One forty, denier, which still isn't that big. No. But it gives you. I got two forty. Two eighty. Is it two eighty? Two eighty. Two eighty. Ooh. I notice that you're changed colors on the thread now. Uh, do you do a lot of thread uh, color changes on the flies? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I try. To, I try. Yeah. I mean, when I first started tying flies, it was black. I don't ever use black much anymore. But I don't need it. Well, <laughs> I. I, I I don't know. I just I just like colored threads. <laughs> yeah, I used, um, I used black on the first two flies, but uh, if there it's gonna be a bit, but you don't see those heads. Yeah, that's true. That make a difference. But if you, you if you have a head up there, I, I'm I'm with you. I like to have you know kind of a cool yeah. cool little color. Yeah. But this golden matches up nice with the. Cool I got a little song. trick for you. Use the thread color to tell whether the fly is weighted or not. Like I, I tie a lot of uh, pheasant tails, everybody, and, and the ones that are weighted, I have some that aren't weighted for mergers. That's a good idea. And then ones that are weighted to get a little bit lower, and I have those with red heads. You know, that's a great idea, Jack. I get one in every once in a while. I've been doing, I've been using that great idea for about 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> it's actually in my first book. You must have read it then. I, that's where I did learn. Oh. That's where I did learn. Never even occurred to oh, me before that. We're, we're having fun here, folks. Okay, again, we got a uh, fly with biots. This time biots. it's a ginger biot because we kind of got a yep. ginger colored fly going here. Ooh. And uh, now, do you get a lot of these uh, here in Colorado, which you're tying up right now? But, oh, oh, sure. Yeah, that. Uh, sure. And the, you know, they, they live in the heavy oxygenated water. Right. They're not going to live in the, like, the slow tail waters and stuff. But, you know, in our free stones, Get a lot of a lot of golden stones. And now uh, we say golden stones out here in the west, but when you go out to the east, it's yellow stones. 
Well, we get a little, a little Yellowstone that's about a size 16. Yeah. We call them yellow salads. Right. And, uh, I mean, it, they're really the same species. It's just they, uh, yeah. they adopt different colors for different areas. And you know what's interesting about yellow salads, Jack? They hatch in the surface film just like a PMD. They're, they're shuck split. I've, yeah. I've watched it. Whereas, and they drift and they and drift and crawl yeah. out. Yeah. Most stoneflies crawl out on the bank and hatch out in right. the bank. Uh, so that's an interesting little tidbit. Well, we didn't what, charge you any more for this little extra bit of entomology <laughs> knowledge. And that's why generally trying to hit a, time a salmon fly hatch it generally sucks because all the nymphs are crawling out at night. And the yeah. trout are gorging themselves on the nymphs, and you see all these salmon flies flying around. You're just, just flailing away with big dry, dry salmon fly patterns, not doing jack. No. <laughs> that's Do one. It, I hate to have my name used like that. That's one of the explanations. <laughs> all right, that's all right. <laughs> all right, we get check jack, focus hey, here. Jack, hey, I'll retract that. Okay. And the next step after we put the buyouts in is I'm going to put a piece of mono. So we can use mono. It's about three x to uh, rib the fly, give it a segmentation. Mm. And once again... That's that, just mono, like... Like 3X. Yeah, yeah. 3X leader. Like, just like you use on your dry flies. You don't have to buy it in a little spool and get charged about 10 times more money, right? <laughs> yeah. Genuine mono thread. Genuine strand line. We're going to tie a little piece of thin skin in. Now, what color is this? This is uh, mottled oak color golden stone. I noticed that they come in all different. I mean, this isn't yeah, the same one. Yeah, that's that's natural bustard. Natural bustard. I love oh, the, the really bustard, neat. the golden stones. They really have all kinds stuff. of great colors. I mean, it really is neat stuff. This is this is really nice stuff. This is saltwater opal, saltwater opal mirage. Man, look and at it shine. It's the nicest damn tinsel I've ever seen. And this is, as I say, the saltwater width, and they make. The pearl mirage and a standard width as well. I'm really big on that material. Ooh, look at that. Oh, I love this material. This is what I use for all my flashbacks now. And put it in all my uh, saltwater flies. Ooh. I know, it's just awesome. Makes you just tingle. Oh, I know. Thinking about it. <laughs> okay, you just kind of hold that on the top. And wrap back to where the biots are tied in. Kind of look that up. So I think we're about biots are tied in. And now we're going to dub a little abdomen with this uh, wopsy dubbing, uh, sow scud, which is again a very lively material. And when it's mm -hmm. wet, it is a perfect golden stone belly. And we put that model back in a little spring back here. And it's not too yellowish. I, I no, I've always believed no. that sometimes on the nymphs you put too much yellow in. Yeah, there. This is the perfect color. I've they're just kind of a dirty cream. That, that's it. I actually mix some gray at times and sure. uh, in with my cream that's, just to get it dirty. Yeah, it's not a bright yellow. Nope, it isn't. So this makes a real nice, really nice realistic golden stone color. Because they're definite, they're a fly that is a definite two-tone individual. that got that model back and the, and the lighter belly. Notice you're putting on just a little at a time. Yeah. And building it up. Not just chunking it on there, and then if I have too much, I'll just pull it off when I get done on the abdomen. And since we're going to rib this... Can I point out something, John, to our friends out there? Absolutely, You're Jeff. holding your hand. I'll put your hand back up there. You're holding your hand right here so you can use your finger, laying it on the vise. And that's, that's a person who's tied a lot of flies. It the economy kinda, of moves. It just kind of helps lay right. the dubbing in there. I, I tell know. people, learn to tie with your hand up on the vise. I don't even consciously do I that. I'm That's glad, why I had to point it out. I'm glad you brought it up. You Did, were on automatic. Yeah, I'm on, I was on automatic. That's what's so amazing about a tying tape over just teaching, because you just see it all done. Sometimes you don't realize what you're doing, but the camera catches yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, any kind of thing like that, uh, the, the, you see, and I, I don't say anything about it, Jack, bring it up. Because uh, I, oh, well. I have a tremendous number of very secretive little moves here at the vice jack that I forget I'm doing. I know. And you, you being very perceptive, can pick up on them. Thank so you. I'm I still depending. I, I, you, I'll still buy lunch. You can keep moving on. <laughs> okay, we're building this uh, abdomen just a little fatter uh, than the end product. Right. Because we're going to rib it. Right. And uh, 
it'll make it a little smaller. Okay, now here comes the thin skin okay, first. Comes thin skin first. Good. Oh, I like that. Boy, that's a neat looking color. Oh, where do you see this bad boy wet? Okay, and then you pull your oh, opal that's mirage that's over so nice. the top of the thin skin. That's very good. Again, rubber leg could be incorporated sure. in this pattern very nicely. Now and here comes the mono. Comes good the idea, mono. the mono. That you know, it's tough. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and you're looking for a different effect here than the, you might say. Why not copper? Because you don't need it. You need something that's that's going to highlight the flash on top. Yeah. I mean, you could you could use you know copper brown or something, but uh, that looks good. I kind of like, like the mono. Yeah, I do too. Great idea. Never thought of using mono for ribbing. And uh, then you just tie it off. So you get a real nice little abdomen there. Ooh, look how it sparkles. Looks just like the the nymph uh, the nymph case. You know when you get one and there's they're crawling in your hand and yeah. wiggling and everything. They shine. Yeah, John has a uh, bird uh, clock that gives us all these different sounds. I love it. I do too. Okay, so we got our abdomen in there. Alrighty. And here, then we're going to build up the thorax, and we're going to put a couple little uh, wing cases in. But first, we're going to put a little more of this south scud dubbing in. And we're making this now a little larger. We're increasing and to make the thorax. The thorax is going to be a little bigger. Yep. Okay. Now we got so we got our thorax started. Now we are going to put legs. Legs. We got uh, golden dyed uh, hen grizzly saddle patches. That's that's what that is. Beautiful looking. And it's perfect little golden stone right. golden stone legs. Nice and soft, it'll just do the job. Yeah, and so you just lay those little legs in there. Again, nice way throws that slack, folks. Just a little bit of slack in there so it catches the leg. You can kind of flatten that out a little bit. You know, make a difference. Again, uses his thumb to guide the scissors so he doesn't cut the thread. The thumb is knocking the thread away. In front of the damn camera. Well, we, will, we, we have multi, multiple cameras to help you out here. Okay. Again, you, you've pulled that amount from that side, so you pull equal amount from the other side, then your legs will be the same size. Right. And put that little bunch in there. So the way back there, about the same as the other guys. Looking good. Let me shorten my this a little bit. Yeah, looks pretty good. Excellent. Okay. okay. Oh, and oh, this is going to be looking far better here shortly. Okay. Jack, did you steal my wing cases? I tried to, but you caught me. All right. Looking good. So we're going to do it again? No, we're going to do a wing case now. We're going to do a wing case, but we're going to put the same formula in there? All right. So we're going to do a little thin skin wing case, a little free, free living wing case. Because they're wing cases. If you see them, they kind of go up in the air. Oh, yeah. And stuff, yeah. So we're going to lay a little wing case. These insects on this are one. alive. They're going to show movement. That's yeah. what our materials are meant to do. Yeah, so we got a little wing case there. Oh, that's nice. And then we're just do one more set of legs, another wing case, and call it good. Okay, Here we so are. we got one wing case laid in there and about half a thorax. Now we're going to put the rest of the thorax in. Same old, same old, same old, same old South Scud dubbing here. I love it. Uh, it's great dubbing. I think Wa uh, Eric that Wops did a really good job. Well, that, this. this color is just perfect. Color is absolutely perfect. And. Our thor thorax would be just a little bigger. We want to mention here too, you know, as we're doing this tape here for Cabela's, that all these materials are available from Cabela's in the, in the shop, 
or through the catalog. Uh, absolutely. Or anything, scan all this stuff. So sure. Just go to your catalog. Okay, Jack, we got the dubbing in there. Now again, we'll just pinch off a little, little bunch of legs here. Using the, the uh, dyed grizzly hen hackle. Hen saddle. Saddle. Dyed golden. Dyed golden. And so we'll lay, lay our legs in here. It'll be a test. So they just kind of go back about where those are. Later on this, right? So I, I make sure I have all this stuff down. You'll do a pop quiz. I have a t written test already for you, Jack. Test, okay. And if, I mean, and doctor not, and a to, copper john. And if you fail, you have to walk home. It's a long ways from here in Colorado to Wyoming. Well, 500 you, miles. Well, you better listen then, Jack. I better listen. You pass that test. I pass that test. That's right. Okay, so we're going to lay our legs in. It looks like you have horns out there, but you're going to trim those off. <laughs> These? <laughs> actually, I kind of like them. I, I know. I actually thought that it looks pretty good. This is the flashback tungstone horned gold, <laughs> golden stonefly. Oh. Can you imagine if you were not a fly tire and you started looking at some of these names? Royal Humpy, Wooly Bugger. I mean, sometimes we go overboard on the names. Yeah, you're right. Stimulator. Uh-huh. Well, have you, have you seen my latest one, Jack? The Meat Whistle? No, I, I saw that. It was in a magazine. Was it? Yeah. It's a that. Meat Whistle. It's good, good fly. When, I think it was in that Fly Fisher magazine Got article with your fly boxes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. It's a good big trout fly. It's a crawdad. Yeah. You hop along yeah. the bottom. Well, you know, Scott Sanchez has mystery meat fly. Yeah, he's got. Then I love my favorite one is Conehead the Barbarian. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, there's some great names. Scott's out there. got a bunch of two truly unique. Okay, names. now you trim that off. Now you're going to do a little bit I, of I a. I cut my wing case in. Now yeah. I'm just doing my old fashioned uh, whip finish, which every people watch me do it. What the hell are you doing that for? I, you know, did that in second grade. Well, well, I just I got a whip finish and I lost it. You know, interesting. We never get a view, kind of from the front. You know. Yeah. Look, look at that. That's what. The, sometimes the fish is going to see that kind of a view. But That's pretty stony. Yeah, it is. But look at this. Look at that. Oh my lord! Does that ever look nice? But Where? but these stonefly nymphs are have a definite two tone, uh, you know, color scheme. Yeah. And that flash just really. Look at that flash. Man, a lot. I tell you, that Opal Mirage saltwater flash is one of my favorite materials. Look at the underbody here. This is what's really, really good. Because that's what uh, it's going to look like from underneath. Fish that's, sees it too. That's what most of those golden stones' bellies are. Yep, that's right. All right. I'm ready for the next one, sir. Little. Quit being particular here now. Little. A little wing flappage. Wing flappage. Okay. 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 What's next on the agenda? Next on the agenda. I believe we've got the net building caddis shack. Uh oh. I've got that in the book. 